Welcome back, friends. This is Mrs. Orendorf. Today we are going to be making a felt pizza. Grab your materials. For this lesson, you need felt for the crust, felt for your sauce, and felt for your materials. You will also need a needle, some thread, and t-shirt paint. And of course, um, you're gonna need a little bit of tacky glue to glue all this down. This lesson was inspired by the artist Klaus Olenberg and all the soft sculptures out there. So thank you, Art World. Let's get started, guys. Okay, guys, we are going to begin by assembling our crust. We had a whole lesson on how to sew the edge of two pieces of felt and we call this a spiral stitch just on the edge not a running stitch the spiral stitch is when you go in you have to have the little knot here so that the knot prevents the thread from coming out make sure you have your knot okay and then you put it in and you spiral and i told my students to leave about uh, the thickness of your pinky that's a good kind of guesstimating. I'm going to keep going just to remind you of this little spiral stitch. And you can maneuver your felt with the hand that is holding it. Make sure that you are not putting the needle through right very close to the edge because it could end up ripping apart. Okay, so you are sort of creating a visual pattern with your stitching. Okay, so that was practice. Now, to begin your pizza, you have your two pieces of felt, and I had a stencil. This is uh, the one I use for the tomato sauce, which you will see in a little bit. And this one is a little bit larger, okay? I have a ruler here to kind of show you how big I made it, this is about 11 inches long by about eight inches wide. Okay, this is called the batting. It's the stuffing that goes inside. It's usually what people use for the inside of a quilt. Um, I used a gray Sharpie to trace my stencil on the fabric. If you see that your fabric has just a little bit of the um, the pen or the Sharpie that you traced it with, then kind of make sure that that area is on the inside. So I am making sort of like we're making a sandwich, okay? And we are going to get our thread, okay? About an arm's length. Not super long, because if you have a super long string, um, it gets tangled. Okay, I'm going to feed my thread through the eye of the needle and I'm going to pull. I'm going to leave a shorter area versus the longer area, okay? Some people call this little rat tail, okay? And I'm going to make my end knot. Now, because this thread, it's just a loop, okay? Let's remember, and then you put the end through the loop, kind of looks like a little pretzel, and then you pull it tight, okay? I made it tight closer to the end so I don't have a lot of waste. Um, this knot may be too small for this thickness of felt, so I'm going to repeat that and try to do a second knot over that first knot to make it bigger. If you want to be extra safe, you could even do it three times. Just make sure they land right on top of each other to make sure that they are big. Okay, now I'm going to begin. You can begin, I would begin at the top corner or bottom corner. I don't suggest beginning randomly in the middle of nowhere because then you're gonna end up with the knot there. So I think I'm going to start here. I'm going to come in from the bottom so that my knot is in the back and pull through, okay? Then I'm going to hold this to where I have a good grip. I'm gonna go in, remember the distance of your pinky and come back out. 
Ta -da. All right, and you keep repeating until you get to the bottom, okay? Take your time, do this right, and if for some reason you get tangled or it doesn't look right, etc., you can take the thread out of the needle, cut off your little thing, and start over again. Some kids end up doing this where they go a lot of distance. That's not a pattern, okay? Also, some kids do this where they do the running stitch. This is your traditional running stitch where you just go in and out, in and out on a line, kind of creates like a broken line. That's not the stitch we're going for, okay? So if you make mistakes, like I said, unthread your needle, pull the thread out. You can use your needle to kind of pull it out and begin again. I am almost done with my thread. It's okay if you run out of thread, you can stop here and keep going with a new piece. Now, in order to seal this end, this is what I'm calling the end knot, make sure that you have, again, a little bit of a rat tail. And sometimes kids, they sew until they have very little thread and they're like, uh, Miss Orndorff, how do I make my knot? You need to have at least this much in order to make your knot. So what you do is you make, you go in and you leave that stitch a little bit loose, okay? You put your needle through there, it's like a little loop, right? Put your needle through there and then pull tight. And then I like to do it two times. Put your needle through there again, make a little loop, and then feed your needle through there and pull tight. That should give you a nice little knot. And if you wanna be extra safe, you can even do it three times. Make your little loop, put your needle through there and pull. Okay, once you're done with that, you always need a decent amount of thread to make your little knots, okay? I'm going to cut and I'm going to get a new piece of string. Okay, you are going to continue this same technique until you get back to where you started. Make sure sometimes the felt or the fabric moves a little bit. Make sure you're lining it up as you are sewing and um, if for some reason you end up with off sizes, you can always give it a little cut to even it out. But I think I'm going to be okay with this one because I'm going to keep holding it in place as I'm sewing. Now we are ready for the fun part. For We are ready for the sauce and for the toppings. You will need your piece of sauce, which is the red felt, ready to go. We are going to be using Eileen's Tacky Glue. Now, uh, because you are, uh, my students are going to be sharing the Tacky Glue, I'm going to have it on a paper plate and then you can scoop it up with some Q-tips, okay? For the video, I'm gonna use the bottle, which would be about the same thing, okay? And you just make just a little line where you would put glue, like if you were gluing a piece of paper to another paper for collage, okay? Um, and then if you need to, with your Q-tip, you can kind of spread it out a little bit towards the edge so that you have nice coverage, okay? Make sure that every piece on that edge gets glue so that you have nice flat even pieces okay now i'm going to place this where i want it tacky glue is not immediate and you want to leave some space for your crust decoration in mine i did a little wavy line with the t-shirt paint now i have cut several toppings i'm gonna have different toppings today's class i had some students ask me well, can we make um, bacon 
we um, we are going to have a planning sheet and you can kind of draw what you think your pizza will look like. I know that a lot of us like just cheese because it's yummy. A lot of kids love cheese because um, it doesn't have veggies and they can, they feel like that's their preferred flavor. But in this case, be creative. This pizza is going to be a work of art and you can get really fun with different colors or um, patterns with your felt. Here I cut out of lime green felt, just a wavy circle, and then I added details, and that's like a cucumber, okay? I'm on a really healthy streak right now in my life, so I love lots of veggies. I do like a little bit of protein, so I put there some like little sausage, and then I made these tomatoes. I'm going to start by dipping my Q-tip in the tacky glue and placing my toppings where I think they would make the best design for my pizza. I'm putting some tacky glue behind them and placing them down. Now, if you want, uh, with a Sharpie marker, you can add details to your little decorations. Um, I did some designs on my cucumber for the seeds and the little patterns that they have on them. And definitely overlap some of your toppings. I am going to do quite a bit of the white strips and that's going to be my cheese. If you have yellow felt, you could always do um, a few different shades of yellow for your cheese. Sometimes they have like three or four cheese pizza. So that's fun. So I'm finished here gluing all of my toppings. I got very creative and I used a lot of different colors to make my pizza way more interesting than I would if it was just plain cheese pizza. I added some sausage, some uh, mushrooms, olives. This here could be like bell peppers, uh, cucumbers, tomatoes. I even added some jalapeno peppers and some um, onion slices. Okay, so this is a very healthy pizza or as healthy as we can get with pizza. And now here I'm going to add some details with my t-shirt paint. Now you're gonna have to be really careful because t-shirt paint takes a while to dry and if you use it and you're accidentally spread it, it could get on you and it could smudge on your pizza and there's no way back. There's no way to turn things around. Uh, here I have some light yellow. Let me test it out. Okay, I think I'm going to use this on my crust. On this crust, I did a wavy line. I think here, I may just do some lines to make it look like a different kind of crust. You can do what you wish. I know that some crusts are stuffed crust. You could add some cheese to your stuffed crust. And I have my pattern for my crust there. Okay, I'm going to use this umber. It's a dark brown. And I'm just going to do some dots on the brown circles to make it look more like sausage. But starting to look like a chocolate chip cookie, <laughs> you could make a dessert pizza. Okay, just giving you some ideas. And then maybe on my tomato, I could do a few. See, I already, I got a little bit on me, so be very careful. I was not joking. A few little dots for the seeds on my tomato slice. Okay, be very careful. I would go slow rather than big on your 
little dabs of color. You could even do some here, just for more detail, more texture. We are creating texture here because when this pizza dries, ah, see, I smudged it, so be careful. Let me see. Easy fix, just a little more on it. There we go. So now you saw what happens, okay? And anyway, I was telling you, um, this will dry puffy. It's puffy t-shirt paint, um, and it will create lots of texture. So that's what we're going for here with this lesson. It's a tactile, soft sculpture. All right, good luck. Can't wait to see what you come up with. Have fun. Bye, see you next time.